Alright guys, I'm back again and I just got done watching a television dude's video of how to get your NES games to work almost every time and of course almost is in quotations there because he had a little bit of trouble getting some games to work but for the most part, you know, he did a really good job as to getting these clean and getting his system working and all that. And I figured that it was about time that I made a similar video to this because I myself have been thinking about making this for a while. And he mentions in his video that in his NES he has a replaced 72 pin connector and apparently you don't even have to push the game down which I thought was kind of interesting because I thought that you absolutely always had to push the game down to get the connection but I guess you don't. I don't know what would happen if you were to push the game down with a replaced 72 pin connector um, but I thought it was really interesting that you could just push it in and turn it on and that's it. And he also mentions that he's really strict about cleaning his games, and I myself am definitely strict about that because every single new NES game that I get, I have to clean it very thoroughly before I even put it in my NES. And one more thing I really do want to mention as well is that my NES still has the original 72-pin connector inside. I only want to replace it if I absolutely have to, but for now I'm just relying on actually cleaning my games which so far is doing really, really well, because even though I do kind of have to fiddle with the game every once in a while to get it to work, you know, it's still a lot better than most other NESs out there. I don't have to blow in the game or any crazy stuff like that. All I gotta do is just kind of wiggle it around and then turn on the power, and then it should do okay. So, like I said, I'm only going to replace the 72-pin connector if I absolutely have to, but for right now, it still has the original one inside and still works great to this day. And the other reason why I'm making this video is because I really want to show you guys my method as to how I clean my games. Now I know that there are a lot of other methods out there, a lot of other people showing you many different things, but I'm just going to show you guys how I do it because I know that there's tons of different versions and different, you know, methods out there to cleaning your NES games or SNES games or Genesis games or whatever, you know. You could use this method for pretty much any game console, but... You know, for NES games, this is what I primarily use, and I use for pretty much all my games, really. So, for the sake of this video, I am using two games here that I have not cleaned yet, and that is Sesame Street 1, 2, 3. If you guys have seen my most recent video game hunting video, you might have seen that this was at the Salvation Army for only two bucks, and I ended up buying it, so thought that it would be a perfect time to actually clean it, you know, during this video. And King's Knight, which I got at a garage sale, which I thought was about time I would actually give that game a clean. So, I figured that, you know, I would get a little bit of solution here, since there's only two games here. I'm not going to get a whole lot, because it would be kind of a waste. And what I use is mostly Windex, but I also use just a little bit of water. You want to use the slightest touch of water to dilute the alcohol, otherwise it would leave a solution behind on the pin connectors, which could be bad. You know, I don't even know what would happen if it would be get left behind, but just for, just for safety, I guess, I put in a little bit of water to dilute some of the alcohol. But you want the slightest little touch of water, because too much water equals not getting them clean, and too much alcohol equals residue on the pin connector. So, just the right amount of water you want to put in that. And of course, as everyone knows, you want to use Q-tips, and, you know, I go through quite a few just to clean one game. And, you know, it's pretty, pretty crazy, you know, for how many Q-tips I really do go through when I have to clean my games. So I figured that we would start off here with Sesame Street 1, 2, 3. Let's go ahead and get that cleaned off. So I'm going to put my camera off to the side here. Sorry about kind of the crappy view here and the crappy lighting. As you can see, my shadow is showing in the camera there. But first you want to do is just kind of soak the Q-tip in the solution for a minute, just kind of shake it around, make sure it's all good and wet, and keep the other side dry. And just go ahead and rub back and forth on the connector board like that. You do kind of want to press hard because you really want to work at getting the corrosion off. And you're going to eventually want to do the same thing to the other side of the connector board. 
But as of right now, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it's pretty dirty on the pin connector there. So I typically clean my NES games until that dirt does not even go on the Q-tip anymore. I want to make sure that, you know, all the dirt comes off. I will not stop cleaning these until every single little speck of dirt and corrosion is off. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try out the other side of the board here. Again, soak the other side of the Q-tip and rub back and forth like so. Let's see how the other side looks. Yeah, it's nasty. The other side is pretty nasty too, as you can probably see there. I know my camera's kind of blurry, but I'm doing the best I can. Both sides of the connector board here are really filthy. So that just means I'm going to end up cleaning these until there is no more corrosion coming off. So let's get a new Q-tip right here and let's go ahead and soak it in the solution once again. And clean both sides of the connector board until there's no more corrosion coming off. the other side here. Alright, I think I'm pretty much good there. I got all the corrosion off as best as I could. Now you want to take a dry Q-tip and just dry it all off. Because if you leave this behind, it could possibly damage the inner electronics of your console. Because liquid plus electronics equals bad news. So you really want to make sure you get this dried off really good. And sorry, I just hit the camera there. You might end up still picking up some dirt and corrosion when you are just drying this off. So you do still want to press relatively hard to get as much off as you can. And I just hit the camera again. God, I keep doing that. Okay, so now that I have this perfectly dry and perfectly clean, now let's go ahead and put it in the NES and see what happens here. So, just put it in. All right, first try and we got it to work. Oh boy, we have Ernie's Magic Shapes or Astro Grover. <laughs> Why not? I'll play this for a couple minutes just to humor you guys. Uh, what should we do? Let's do Ernie's Magic Shapes. Ernie's Magic Shapes. Uh, Presto Shapo, match the shapes. Zip Zap the shapes. Poof Pop the colors. Oh my god, this is so cheesy. Uh, hmm. Let's go ahead and do this one. Oop, hold on. Match the shapes. Let's do this. Well, I guess you just gotta select it and press A. And look at that! You picked the correct shape. Isn't that, isn't that nice? And you get the little bunny coming out and saying, Yay, you did it! Let's try this one more time. I can imagine somebody getting really drunk and playing this game and having just the greatest time with it. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Bunny. But yeah, you guys get the idea that it works very first try now, thanks to my cleaning method. And this is still an original 72-pin connector. And a very good way to tell that it is, is that the game's going very smoothly. You really don't have to apply any force at all to get it to go in. It's just very smooth going in, very easy to push down. And it will go on very first try using this method. So, you know, like I mentioned, you know, there would be a couple of times where I would have to wiggle the game around to get it to go on the sweet spot on the connector board, but I really don't have to do that that much. But, you know, for the most part, I could just throw it in, hit the power button, and it'll work. 
and there it is again. And just to prove it, let's go ahead and do that one more time. Push it in, press down, turn it on. So yeah, I really hope that you guys found this video to be really informative, and if you guys have any questions about some methods of getting the games to work or some cleaning, you know, solutions that you really want to, you know, learn how to make or any of that kind of stuff, you know, I'd be very happy to answer them for you. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and as always guys, have a great day.